In this video, we will learn how to provision and configure a squid proxy server. And we will also learn how to perform testing with a client. We will be using an external web client to test and we will also see how it is caching the web pages. So before we start and further dive into the technical concepts of squid proxy server, let's quickly understand what is squid proxy so squid proxy is a popular open source caching and forwarding web proxy server so there are two types of proxies one is called as a reverse proxy and the other one is called as a forward proxy so forward proxy is like an intermediary device between the web client and the server and it is used to improve the web server performance and how does it do it? it? It basically does this through a concept called caching. So what it does is it constantly caches the frequent uh, requested web content, such as web pages, images, and other resources. And then it will serve those cached copies to the clients rather than fetching it from the, uh, from the origin server. So, each time the client requests uh, the data from the web server, a forward web proxy sits in, in between client and the web server, and it helps to deliver the content that is cached in its database. So it has, Squid Proxy has a lot of uh, features such as caching, access control, authentication, content filtering, SSL and TLS interception, which is the most important. And it also provides a detailed logging and monitoring. So coming to this particular technical demonstration, we will be using two different servers here. Both are Linux operating system. One of the server, we will be installing Squid Proxy and we will be using that as a forward uh, web proxy and we will also use an external web client to test that it's caching the web pages so let's get started with the demonstration so we have two linux uh, servers for this demonstration and the server that we will use to configure the squid proxy will be having an ip address which is 10.0.1.47 and Coming to the other server, we will be having 10.0.1.36. So this will be our web client and this will be our Squid Proxy. Now, so let's proceed to install Squid Proxy. And one simple way to do it is yum install Squid. And that will download all the required packages and it will proceed to install the Squid Proxy server. And once you see the complete statement here, which means the Squid Proxy is installed. And once the Squid Proxy is installed, you can also see the configuration file. So Squid Proxy comes up with a default configuration file which will help us to configure the ACLs and the routes that it needs to take, which connections it should accept. All this uh, configuration details are inside the configuration file. So the directory for the configuration file is etc squid. And once you are in this directory, you can see different configuration files here but this is the main file that we are looking for. Now, let's quickly verify what is inside the configuration file. You can see different things here, um, the port which it is there, uh, what type of traffic is allowed, what type of traffic is denied. And right now, if you can see, it's only the local net and the local host which are under allowed and remaining everything is denied and it only accepts on 3128 port. So you can change the configuration as per your requirement 
and we will be doing that in the further sections of this particular demonstration. So once you verify the configuration file, let's quickly verify if the process is running or not. So you can do system CTL, status, squid, and this says uh, it's currently inactive or in a dead state. So let's quickly enable this squid proxy. And you can do that using the system CTL enable squid. And you can also do system CTL start squid. So this will enable and start the squid service on your operating system. Now, uh, let's quickly verify if it is running right now. Status squid. And you can see it's currently active and it's running. Now, once we make sure the squid service is running, let's install and configure the web client for the proxy use. And in order to do that, we need two more services on this particular operating system, which is the telnet and the links. Links will be used for browsing the content and Telnet is used for checking whether the local host has access to the port, which is 3128 in, the, in this scenario. So let's quickly clear the screen and we will proceed with installing Telnet and Links. And they, they are already installed here, so we are good to go. So let's quickly check uh, Telnet localhost 3128. And we can see that uh, the connection is getting connected. Right? And we can also verify the this with the IP address. So let's use Telnet 10 147 and we will be doing this on 3128 port and you can see it's getting connected now similarly uh, let's move on to the other uh, server and let's check if we can connect on this port on this particular server And you can see the connection is refused on the client side. So um, just to verify whether we have both uh, Telnet and links installed on the client, let's quickly install them. Or if they are already installed, we will come to know they are already installed. Yeah, they are already installed and they have the latest version. Now we are on the client and Let's quickly verify if we can browse, let's say, um, yahoo.com. And we can see that it's using, it's trying to find the cookies and all. Let's accept it, allowing this cookie. Yes. Yes. Right. So we can see we can access that particular web page. And let's do one thing. Let's clear this out. And let's export the HTTP proxy. And our proxy server IP address. Let's go here. 101147. 10 0 147 and we are looking for 3128 port. Right. And once we export our HTTP proxy on the client, now let's browse the Yahoo website. We'll allow all the cookies. And we can basically have access to the web page. Now, 
we verified the connectivity to the yahoo.com using the HTTP proxy. But let's quickly go back to our script proxy server and let's stop the service and then try to access the yahoo.com. So the process how you can do it is you can issue system CTL, stop, squid, and now the system uh, it's stopped. We'll just quickly verify the, the status. Right, so now the squid is stopped. Let's quickly verify using the telnet if we can connect on the 3128 port. The connection will be reduced, yes. Now let's go back to our web client and let's try to access yahoo.com. And you can immediately see that it's unable to connect to the remote host like this. So we will change back the configuration to block access from the second server and then we will examine the error again. So what we're going to do is basically, um, this is where we will work with our configuration file. So here we will open our configuration file, which is in the squid directory, squid.conf, and we will comment out the local net source IPs such as this one this one it's also the internal network we are looking only for the internal network ranges to block and also this one We will quickly save the file. Okay. We'll quickly save the file and then we will quickly restart the service. Right. Now um, let's go back to our client server and let's try to browse the yahoo.com. And we can see actually, instead of connection refused, we are seeing access denied. So the client is not able to connect to yahoo.com. Now let's go back to our server. We will re-edit the configuration of squid proxy. This time we will allow only the, uh, a single client access to be allowed. So in here, um, so what I'm going to do is, so instead of the 10 dot range, let's allow only the IP address of our client, which is going to be one, let's quickly double check. Ten zero one. 36, 10, 0, 1, 36 will remove the slider range and provide only IP address. Once this is done, we will save the file and we will quickly start um, the squid proxy. Now, once this is done, let's go back to our client and let's try to browse it. You are still seeing this, um, right? So let's quickly stop and start this quick proxy, right? Okay, uh, let's quickly check the status if we are seeing any particular errors here. Right, it's running, process started, everything looks good. No errors, nothing. So let's go back. And we can 
browse the yahoo.com page once we accept all the cookies so in this demonstration you can see how we can control the client communication using the squid proxy and how we can limit which ips can access and this we are doing it by setting the http proxy on the client server i hope this video is informative please do let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and i hope um, i'll be able to do more uh, videos in future on proxies mainly on the forward proxy and the reverse proxy and we will be using nginx and all the other things so stay tuned for all those videos and till the next video happy learning